I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Over the last few weeks, as the weather has got a little bit nicer, I've been doing a little bit of walking, a little bit of exercise around our area. And sometimes I walk in exercising clothes, um, shorts and t-shirt and so on. Sometimes I'm walking around dressed as a priest. And sometimes it's quite interesting to see the way people react, just to see the way people acknowledge or not acknowledge me um, when I'm walking. Um, It's not that I'm in our own area, I'm relatively well known. A lot of people know me from our live stream. I've been in our area for for a reasonable time now and we have quite a number of Catholics in our area and people know who I am. And some people interact quite positively and um, we might do some exercise or um, a a little bit of a chat at times um, with distancing and the other appropriate measures in place. But there are some who perhaps are, you can see that they're sort of thinking, what on earth is a priest existing almost in this context? St. Francis of Assisi, he instructed the first Franciscans to preach always, but only where necessary to use words. And one of the things he encouraged the Franciscans to do was to put on their habit and to walk around the town. And in that, that was a witness. It was a public sign of the presence of God. Jesus today asks his disciples, his followers, what are people saying about me? What do people say who I am? Who do people say I am? It's a famous, a famous phrase. And Jesus comes to Caesarea Philippi to ask this. He's asking, what's the public opinion about Jesus? What's the public opinion of the followers of Christ? What are people, what's the word on the street, perhaps? And he comes to Caesarea Philippi. And Caesarea Philippi was a center of a few things. It was a center of political power. Caesarea Philippi, named after the Roman Caesar and after Philip the Tetrarch, the, one, of, one of Herod's children. So it was a centre of political power, but it was also a centre of religious power. There were a number of temples, some to the, the Roman gods, some to the Greek gods, um, and some to other gods as well. It was a place where there was many different religious and political um, power. And then there was Roman, there was Jewish um, guards um, and others who were there in that place. It was the melting pot of society. Jesus comes to this place and says, what's the public opinion? And I find it fascinating to listen to people who are not Christians, but even to listen to Catholics about what they think of the church, what they think of being a follower of Christ today. And I think it's a great question for all of us. Who do we say Jesus is? Who is Jesus for us? For many people, Jesus today has become something that's very much a private thing. They don't really want to live out Jesus in the world because perhaps it's too dangerous. Perhaps you might be ridiculed, like sometimes people ridicule me. Or perhaps people sometimes look at me in ways that sort of saying, we almost denigrate you because you represent something we don't hold to be true is that's what's become of Christianity? Is that what's become of our following of Jesus Christ? Has it just become something that's private that we do in our own little private space? We can't even gather together under the restrictions. Has it become something that's purely private? And this is where Jesus is asking his followers, who am I and what does it mean to be a Christian? What's it mean to be a follower of Christ? And this is where our readings enlighten us today. Isaiah in the first reading is talking about a time where we should not be ashamed because we are followers. We should not be impacted by the insults that we will receive because we are are followers. This is what Isaiah is saying. If people are going to insult us, if we might have the temptation to be ashamed that we are followers then our faith can't just be a purely private thing. 
It needs to be known. People need to know who we are. And that takes us to our gospel. Jesus says, if you want to be a follower of mine, you must take up your cross and follow me. A cross, that's a massive piece of timber. You can't get away with it being private if you're carrying the cross. And that's what it means to be a Christian. We look at some of the other religions, even the ones that existed at the time of Jesus. For the Jewish people, it was a very public thing to be a, to be a Jew. Depending on which background you, you were from or which type of Jew you were, you might have curls, you might have a particular hairstyle. Many of them wore yarmulkes. This is still present even in our world today. It was a very public thing. Even for Muslims today, it's very public. We know, you can look very clearly, come to some parts of Sydney, and we know who is, who is a faithful Muslim by the way people dress, by, by the way the people wear what they're doing. When people look at Christians, some Christians might have a, a piece of jewellery, a little cross on them. Some Christians in recent times have, in some areas of Sydney, we see it, not as much in our own area, but I often see tattoos of a cross or the, perhaps a miraculous medal or um, the sacred heart or an image of Mary on their arm or their leg and so on. We don't see that as much in, in this area of Sydney. There is some of that. People are, are quite public in that sense in some places. But I think the temptation in our own area here is perhaps to keep our faith quiet, is to hide it away, to make it private. And that's where our second reading reminds us what it means to be a Christian today. We're called to be people of works, of good works. People should know us by the good things that we are doing. Often they only know us by what they hear in the press, the media, and they love to report on the, the terrible, the disasters that happens with a small number of Christians. As a community, we are doing everything we can to ensure the safety of all people. We are doing that in relation to our COVID restrictions, of our cleaning measures, but this, this today is Safeguarding Sunday where the church reflects on how we are trying to build a culture that protects children, the vulnerable and all people. The crimes, the abuses that occurred in the past, these were terrible. But that's not what it means to be a Christian. Being a Christian is having faith and living it out with good works. And this is why our Archbishop has started an appeal to assist Afghan refugees who have come to Australia. 3,000 already have come to Australia in quarantine at the moment. And many will be coming into um, parts of Sydney and other parts of our country, into our communities. Most of them will not be Christians. But as Christians, we help all people. That's what St. James is, is talking about in this second reading, that we're called to have faith and we're called to have good works. We are known through the efforts of Pope Benedict and then Pope Francis to have a special care for our common home, for our environment. We need to look after this place, not just for, for Christians, but for all people. We care about the education of all. We care about the inclusion of all people. With people with disabilities, they shouldn't be thrown to the side. They're part of our community. Of whatever path a person has chosen, they should be able to live life and live it to the full. And this is part of what it means to be a Christian. Christianity is not something that's private. It's something that's called to be public. We might be ridiculed. People might want to insult us because we are Christians. They might want to bring up things from the past. Maybe things from five years ago, from 20 years ago, from 800 years ago. They might say, oh, you can't be a Christian because of this or that. What it means to be Christian, as Jesus says, is to take up your cross and to follow Jesus Christ. To follow Jesus Christ is to go to the cross. It's to go to the resurrection. But following Jesus Christ is a way of love. It's a way of compassion. It's a way of justice. And it's a way of kindness. Let's be people of goodness. And let's walk, as we walk in our own area here, let's walk in the presence of the Lord. When we walk around, let us walk with joy. 
Let us be known that we are Christians and that we are known by our love for God and our love for neighbour. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living.